Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appear today on behalf of the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors, uh, representing uh, life and health agents that uh, sell health plans in Florida today. We wanted to make two points, and uh, this first point is also supported by the FAIA and also the Florida Health Underwriters. The Federal Act allows uh, a new class of person to talk to folks back in your district about uh, enrolling on a health care plan through the exchange. Uh, up until today, for hundreds of years in Florida, the only people that could sell insurance were licensed health insurance agents. You have a license, you have training, you have action you can take against them if they misappropriate funds or give bad advice. Uh, this new class of individuals is called a navigator. and. Uh, we certainly understand that there's probably a role for navigators. Uh, I think the idea is to have them reach out uh, into the community and try to get uninsured folks uh, signed up through the exchange. We would like to see you all in your legislation adopt provisions to provide some regulatory level uh, of supervision over them. Our idea would be is let Department of Financial Services issue a license, make them take some training, uh, make sure that uh, in the event that they do something untoward towards a customer, you can put them uh, out of business. And frankly, we think that they should be required to only talk to people who are uninsured. Those who have insurance uh, already have someone that is going to be a lot more trained and has received over the years hundreds of hours of training in health insurance, and that's a health insurance agent. So that would be our first uh, issue. The second issue is, is that in the event the Senate decides to develop a voucher-like program, uh, we think that uh, there would be a lot of enthusiasm uh, in the agent community to helping uh, the state of Florida with that. In other words, if a customer can get a voucher from the state of Florida, go on the exchange, pair that with a tax credit, and buy the same health insurance plan that, that, that I have, for example, um, there are 40,000 licensed li uh, health insurers. There's another 60,000 licensed life and health insurers. And there are several hundred thousand all lines agents uh, that can sell health insurance in Florida. And to me, having that force be deployed uh, to reach out and help the uninsured, uh, I think, would really, really help uh, get us there. So that voucher-type program over a more of a Medicaid, historical Medicaid approach, uh, will bring more market forces to bear that, that Medicaid does not. Okay. Thank you for that presentation. Any questions? I saw Senator Gibson first and then uh, Senator Sobel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is the first I've heard of the navigator. Is that similar to a choice counselor like we have in Medicaid? What Do you know the definition of this navigator? I do know the definition. Um, and the idea is, is that they, can, uh, they have to maintain expertise uh, in the health insurance programs offered on the exchange. They provide information to customers about enrolling uh, on the exchange. Here's where the rubber meets the road. The federal law says that they facilitate the selection of a qualified health plan. And as you and I know, that's sitting in front of a computer, perhaps, with someone who's never had health insurance, saying, pick this HMO versus pick this indemnity plan versus pick that. And there is a lot to consider, and there are mistakes that can be made. And so that's why we think that uh, the state should provide some oversight there. Uh, three other states last year passed navigator uh, registration requirements. There's about 10 states pending this year with, with similar duties. They, they also have, Senator, another category called application assister, application coordinator. And our idea would be is anybody that helps facilitate the selection of the qualified health plan ought to have some training and something to lose if they send someone down the wrong path. And, and to answer your question directly, it is very similar. Choice counselor. Choice, uh, choice counselor is to Medicaid what a navigator is to the to the um, exchange. Mr. Chair. Sure. Uh, and I can't remember. Do our choice counselors go through training? Or are they just hired by ACA? They they go through some basic training. Probably not the degree of licensing that he's contemplating with navigators. Okay. Thank you. Senator Sobel, did you want to ask uh, a question of Mr. Meehan? Yeah, I'm going to follow up and uh, give some. Uh, spoke about and then the voucher idea. Um, so, are these navigators actually uh, sales agents? Are they the equivalent, or are they? I mean, at, in the federal law, they're the equivalent. The uh, the answer is under the federal law as it sits today, they can be anyone. There is no minimum requirement. So they. They are definitely not insurance agents, and the law does make that clear. 
because insurance agents can go on the exchange and help their customers. And frankly, if you have someone on a qualified health plan today that may qualify for a tax credit, the only place you can get it is the exchange, and it's your duty as an agent to go on there and help your customer get that. So that's our concern is that they have, have no information. And, and mm -hmm. frankly, it's so much more complex looking at private health insurance plans when there's choices between many of them as opposed to Medicaid, which is a more singular type of plan. I think that would be the reason why we would want to make sure there's a little extra training. I agree with you. They should have uh, some form of education, and I'm wondering uh, how much does an insurance agent have, uh, you know, to become an insurance agent? Because if these people are going to be selling a product, uh, we don't want fraudulent people. There's, there's no guarantee, you know, that you're going to get what you pay for or whatever. Um, so uh, I, I agree with you. But how many hours does an insurance agent, uh, how much is required, and is there any certification involved with them, insurance agent? Mr. Chairman, so uh, if you sell only health insurance, you take a 40-hour course, and then you take a test, and then every two years, as Senator Gibson, when she had, I believe you used to have an agent's license at one time, if I'm remembering correct. No, that's not true. Uh, every two years, you take another 20 hours of continuing it because there's enhancements and changes. So someone who's been selling health insurance for 20 years in Florida has hundreds of hours of health-specific training. But to get started, 40 on the front end and then 20 a year. We were recommending somewhere in the 30 range uh, to get them licensed, um, and we think that would be sufficient. And are they certified then if they take that course or the 30 hours? Yeah. Well, our, our idea would be as you do two things, you, 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 three things. You give them that, edu make them take the education, have them apply for a license, and check through their fingerprints to make sure that they're not, um, you know, a fraudster or someone that's been. Well, you know, every time there's a new big, law out there, there's uh, somebody who figures out how to make uh, money, uh, not exactly the uh, proper way or the legal way. Uh, we've, we have uh, dealt with a lot of bad actors throughout the years. My other question about the voucher, are you saying that you would like uh, the individual to be given the money uh, to, to to uh, select uh, the best medical plan? Is that what you're suggesting with the voucher? Yeah, M Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know that I would want to necessarily write a check and put it in someone's hands because there's a, it could find its way <laughs> to some other purpose. But to the extent they can go on the exchange, get their tax credit, pick the same plans that I can pick and purchase it, I'm sure we can work out the mechanism that the funds, you know, perhaps go direct from the state to the insurer. But, yes, the, the okay. idea is, is it's their ticket to, to, to buy a full coverage plan. The mechanism is really important so that it, it actually provides for coverage. Right. And not used for other purposes. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Meenan. Appreciate your testimony today. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see Senator Soto. Do you have a question for Mr. Meenan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with the exchange and with the potential of a subsidized plan for the folks between 100 to 137 percent, it presents an opportunity potentially for uh, insurance agents to um, perhaps service these populations. Uh, I don't know if you spoke about it already. I, I apologize that I'm late, but I want to know, as far as a fee structure and how you think that would work, do you all have any ideas for, for our recommendations? Fee structure for the agent? Yeah, for the for the agent as compensation for assisting people with potentially the exchanges or the subsidies that have been talked about in this uh, committee uh, last week. Yes, so uh, we believe that there is a free market now, and the insurers that are going to be offering plans on the exchange already have uh, contracts with agents. So our view would be is is let that remain a matter of contract between the insurers uh, and their agents, and don't dictate or try to change that. My, my view is that will provide the most motivation to get as many people as possible out combing uh, uh, the neighborhoods to try to find folks that are uninsured and, and get them insured. 